Hi everyone, today we're gonna chat about how to create these beautifully lined envelopes. Envelope liners are my most favorite upgrade. I think they just add such a beautiful touch and make uh, the invitation seem so luxurious from the first time that someone opens the envelope. We're gonna talk about the best papers for liners, where to find them, how to make sure they match up with your envelopes, and of course, how to apply them and all my favorite tools. So let's go ahead and get started on these. So I'm Lainey of Design by Lainey, and I am a custom stationery designer as well as a business strategy coach for other creative entrepreneurs. So if you are a DIY bride, which I currently am myself, I am planning my own wedding and my own invitation, so that's really fun, as well as working with my clients. So even if you're um, a DIY bride just doing this for yourself, or if you wanna start a stationery business, this uh, video is gonna be super helpful for you because I get a lot of questions on envelope liners. So design-wise, there's a few different things you can do. You, of course, can do something um, like this, which has to be cut in a specific place. It's going to be a little bit more difficult than something like this, which is just an all over pattern. You can also use like a photorealistic picture or a monogram. You can do it so many things with envelope liners and I love them. And one question I get is if they tear when people open them. So when you're sealing a, a envelope with a liner in it, you want to try and only seal this kind of top half or a little bit less than that because that'll create a little opening here and when someone opens it they won't be tempted to tear this top portion yes sometimes it's still going to be torn but it's still going to be a beautiful envelope even if this gets torn um, if you're worried about that then maybe don't do a design that's centered right around this fold so that you can avoid um, tearing your beautiful design so you'll notice that most of these envelopes we're working with are going to be from the same company and I'm gonna link them below. We also have a print and paper vendor guide that um, lists all of our favorite suppliers and how we get liners for them as well. So these are all the exact same shape. This is another supplier that I sometimes use if these folks are out of stock or don't have a color that I like. And as you can see, if we compare this, they are very, very, very different shapes. So if I were to put this liner into this envelope, for instance. Uh-oh, that is just not going to work out. Just sticking out over there. And even if you were to cut this down, for instance, you can see that the angle is just completely off on there as compared to these guys. So when you're buying your envelopes and your liners, try to get them in the same place if you can. Um, the place that I'm going to link below does offer custom liners, or you can always make them yourself. And so how you do that is you would print this on an eight and a half by 11 or an eight by 10 sheet of paper. And then you can either trace the envelope or you can cut one apart and cut it a little bit. I like to go just a little bit below the adhesive and create a template. And then you can just get these angles stack cut at FedEx or um, Kinko's, Office Depot, et cetera. Or of course you can cut them yourself. And the only difference here is that you'll have a pointed tip on the liner as opposed to this uh, rounded tip that we have here. But it's perfectly acceptable, especially if you're not trying to create a business and you're just a bride trying to do these for your own wedding. So now that we've covered this, I'm gonna stick with these envelopes because these are what I use most often and what I have my uh, liners cut today to fit. You might ask what paper we use. You can see this is super thin paper as opposed to something thicker that we're gonna use for the actual invitation. This is called text weight. And it's about 70 or 80 pounds is the weight of this, whereas this is cover weight and it's about 120 pounds. It's a lot thicker. But if you add something that thick to an envelope liner, it's going to make it tough to fold and close the envelope. And it's also going to add to the postage weight. So you don't necessarily want to do that. This is more of a decorative feature than a functional feature. So you like it to be really thin. So I like to assembly line this process as much as possible because it can get really tedious. So if I have my stack of envelopes, I like to kind of pinch over here so that it opens the little flap. Oh, these are not in the same direction. <laughs> and just go ahead and stack them all like this and then pull them open. So now they're all standing open for you. Then I like to insert all of the liners at once. A lot of you ask me how we put our invitations together as well as how we charge for putting things together, um, what our assembly levels are for our clients. So we put together a comprehensive guide to show you 
all the tips and tricks we use, as well as extra information about how we charge for assembly, what order the card should go in, what etiquette says about assembly, and how we deal with our clients throughout this process. So if it's before May 1st, you can pre-order the invitation assembly guide at the link below. If, it, if it's after May 1st, you can go ahead and purchase that at the link in the description of this video. So I hope you enjoy all the tips and tricks about how we assemble invitations, how we're most productive, and how to save you a ton of time and money during that process. All right, so now we've got our stack here that's just got all the liners loose in it. And what you're gonna do is take them one by one and position them. And the only thing you're really uh, worrying about is just getting the tips to match up. That's the best way to do it. Or if you prefer, you can look at um, these side angles. I kind of do it both ways sometimes. All right, so once I've got this lined up, I'm gonna grab the flap, fold, and make sure you get a good crease there, and then just open the flap. And that'll cause the liner to stay in place, and then you adhere it. I use a couple of different tools for this. My number one favorite is this Scotch Advanced Tape Glider. There are a lot of different refills that you can get, but the Scotch brand to me um, have always been the most successful. You can also use any kind of um, general tape roller, a lot of people do that. You can get those at craft stores, etc. Or you might think of this as an option and wonder if it will work. Yes, a glue stick will work perfectly. So if you're just doing this for a one-off order, um, a glue stick is a great alternative. If you're going to be doing it a lot, definitely recommend the tape glider. I have it linked below for you from my Amazon shop. So then this is just kind of like a little gun and people ask me a lot of times if I adhere the entire thing, but you want the bottom to be able to move a little bit because as you put invitations in and as the guest pulls them out, um, there's gonna be a little bit of movement down there. So you wanna just make sure um, that you're really only adhering the top part. You're gonna have the best results that way. So I just go as close to the edge as possible. And then once you do that, this has gone over a little. I'm not sure if you can see that tape, but you just kind of roll it back in, get to that point, and smooth it down. You definitely want to smooth it down towards the top. And then you open it, it pretty much stays in place. It kind of moves a little bit um, around this fold, which is totally fine, but it stays in place uh, horizontally. So then you can put the invitation in and close this over it and you've got a little bit of flexibility there. See how my little crab is moving? It's pretty cute. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and do these just so you can see. I'll speed it up for you. Okay, I had really high hopes, but I've done a few little mess ups on here and I just wanna show you that that's completely okay. You can just fold the adhesive back over and as long as it's not trailing out of here, it's okay. Even if you get a little speck of dirt or something, not a big deal because no one is going to ever see this part. Yay. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna speed up and do the rest of them. All right, so now we've got these five perfectly lined envelopes. This is maybe my favorite liner I've ever created. And just as a reminder, here are those tools that I recommended. And then they are all linked below in my Amazon shop. And linked below also um, is our print and paper vendor guide, which will show you all the vendors that we use for getting envelopes, getting liners printed, um, no matter how you wanna get them printed. And we also have the main supplier for the envelopes and liners that we used today linked in there for you directly. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let us know if you have any questions on this process or on envelope liners in general by commenting below. We love to see pictures of your liners that you've created. And I hope that you'll give us a like and a subscribe as well as hit that little bell button so that you don't miss any of our future videos that release every Thursday. Thanks everyone.